The U.S. Center is organized by the Department of State as a public diplomacy space, organized uh, specifically so that we can highlight some of the great work that's being done on climate change and climate action, not only in the United States, but across the world. Mm -hmm. uh, what's this ball for? This amazing thing is NOAA's Science on a Sphere. NOAA stands for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And this is an unbelievable way that we can communicate um, how changes across our world are actually occurring spatially as basically we would see it as if you're standing from outside Earth looking upon on, looking down on it. Yeah. But we think about uh, NOAA is just like the world with a bureau, not uh, by belong to one country. You serve the world worldwide. Mm -hmm. What's, why why no one want to do that? Well, we're all connected, and, and specifically when we're talking about the oceans and the atmospheres, that's over everywhere. It's not just over one country, it's, it's the entire globe. So when we're monitoring the world and we're trying to see what's changing, we want to provide those data sets to the world so everyone can look at it and learn for themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the contribution of the NOAA uh, for the climate change issues uh, in the science field? Well, NOAA does a lot of research, not only looking at climate change, but also just monitoring what's going on right now across the world. We can see what changes are occurring now. We can see what types of impacts are happening on a weather time scale to a climate time scale. So we not only keep the data, we also do make forecasts. We also do research on what's going to happen to our future. Okay, so you uh, provide the data to the policymaker, especially the U.S. government. Is that NOAA role? Right. Yeah, no, we do provide data to, to decision makers. We do research for them as well. And, you know, we, we try to encapsulate what our data is actually saying in a way that's a little bit more understandable to the rest of the world because the data by itself is not useful. But you need to actually look at that data and come to a conclusion about what that data is actually saying. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you are a scientist idol. <laughs> What's the idol for? It's a, a kind of the campaign and how to do that. So yeah, I was named America's Scientist Idol at a competition held by the uh, American Association for the Advancement of Science a couple of years ago. So basically that's just saying that I'm a pretty good communicator of science and I think it's so important when we're talking about science communication because oftentimes there can be a disconnect between what, we're, what scientists, we as scientists are actually researching and, and communicating that effectively so people actually understand what we're trying to say, why it's important, what the impacts can be. Mm -hmm. uh, before that, I, I'm wondering a uh, long time ago, we know the U.S. people do not believe the climate change because they do not believe uh, global warming. They say the climate is always changes. And uh, so what's the Americans uh, thinking about the climate change now? They, did they believe it now? I don't want to speak for everybody, but I, I would say that science has really improved, our communication has improved about what, what climate change is actually saying. And, and I think there's a, as you can tell here just from COP21 and everything going on back home, there's it's a groundswell of understanding now, I would say, that climate change is a big deal and it's caused by humans. Okay. And uh, so uh, communication for the climate change issues is very important. What's the difference? And uh, Because sometimes some scientists just say too much, too detailed, and everybody don't want to under understand about that. But just like you, you, you can communicate the people yeah. how, how, you, how to do that by, by yourself. So yeah, as scientists, we tend to talk a lot. And we like to kind of get into the really in-depth, specific, technical aspects of our science because that's what interests us. But we have to recognize that just like we don't like other things, people sometimes don't want to get into that much in-depth and uh, technical detail. So it's a way of talking about our science. It's not dumbing it down. That's not talking down to people. But it's just communicating what it means. What are the impacts from what we're actually seeing? And and kind of talking more at a level that people can understand in general, and not trying kind of getting too specific or too. I guess you could say digressing from the main point of what our research is. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.